Hello and welcome. My name is Jody Lynn Craven, founder of Abundance Consciousness, and this is my dear friend, Heather Marie. Hi, I'm Heather Marie, founder of Soulgate. Welcome to Channel Squared, where we have extraordinary conversations about everyday life topics. Yeah, and today we are talking about living with intention. If you find yourself being drug on the roller coaster of emotion, especially at this time, and you really desire a life of ease, joys, and joy and bliss, have you set that intention? How do you set that intention? Why is intention powerful? That's what we're talking about today. It's going to be a fun topic. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we should start out with what the definition of intention is. So 100%. I'm actually going to read this right here off of dictionary.com. It says an act or instance of determining mentally upon some action or result, the end or object intended purpose. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's a great place to start. I think <laughs> great place to start. Would you say that your personal definition for intention is any different than that? Um, I think it's sort of a blend of that and some other things. You know, when I think about intention, I think about uh, not just what I wish to like create or have experience or, you know, it's not just that, but it's also about like being aware of, of, of how I am moving through life. You know, it, intention to me is something that um, is easy to misunderstand, I think. And I think that it's because of those reasons. You know, some people look at intention as this is, I want to a achieve this. And so I am mentally going to create this. And, and yes, mentally in, in a certain regard, but also like, emotionally, vibrationally, like, you know, what vibe are you putting out? We talked about that last week about a vibration and how important your energy is and how it speaks. So, I mean, I think that it's a good topic that to be talking about because I think that people get a little confused about intention. Mm -hmm. Kind of like single focus to, you know, we'll get fall into the trap of, you know, creating an, an intention for specific things like, you know, I'm having a new webinar or I'm building a new product or, you know, I want to get X number of clients. Um, we seem to be okay with setting intentions around that stuff for the most part, but we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more of that too. Um, but I think what about the rest of your life? You know, you're either yeah. setting an intention or you're kind of just going with the fray, going along with, it's not even going along with the flow. If you're not setting any sort of intention, who's setting the intention for you? Yeah. Well, and that is a great question. You know, that's a great question. If you're not setting the intention, who's setting it for you? Mm -hmm. Because somewhere there is intentions being set, right? I think, you know, this was something that we had talked about earlier um, when we were preparing for the show today. You know, we were talking about people who just, they live the nomad life, you know, and they just go wherever they go and do whatever they do. And, you know, we kind of had a, a discussion about, well, are they unintentional? Mm -hmm. You know? And, and I don't know, I don't know what the answer is to that, by the way, you know, well, I, I think mean, it's are individual, they, right, right. Like, I mean, you could intentionally go with the flow and go from experience to experience and your only intention, you know, in life is to be in the moment. Like, right, I right. feel like surfs up, dude, like <laughs> a California <laughs> swimmer guy would, would live by that attention at intention perhaps. But I think some people don't have an intention whatsoever. And, and in, they are going with the flow, but it's really this destructive roller coaster or, you know, being pulled by the tide one way and then another, and then one way or another. And it, it ends up being things are happening to you rather than for you. And there's a huge discrepancy between the two. And I think the active experience that you'll feel as one person versus the other will be completely different as well. 
Absolutely. You know, I think that, you know, if you're having, um, you know, the intentional lifestyle of living in the present, living right now, <clears throat> well, that's an intention, you know, and um, if it is serves up, then great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of serves up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, especially like, you know, we, we used to live in um, Southern California and there were a lot of people who kind of lived that, you know, hippie nomad lifestyle, you know, they all had a, you know, fun little um, VW bus that they camped out of. And that was just kind of their lifestyle. I had a really good friend who lived that way for many, many years. And, you know, I don't think she would trade that for anything, but she was very, she was still intentional about it. You know, she intended to go to Bali and to, you know, travel around the world. And, you know, she didn't wear shoes for a long time, <laughs> you know, and that was just her intention was to be, you know, one with her experience in the right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful intention. And mm -hmm. your intention changes as you evolve, as your life changes. Let's talk about specifically what it means to live with intention. Like, what does that even look like for those that are watching that are like, yeah, I get it when it comes to a goal or something that I want to achieve, but you know, that's this part of my life. And then there's the rest of my life. Am I supposed to like sit here and be like, my intention is, and then do, what does that look like for you, Heather? Well, I think that, you know, when I look at how to live intentionally, <clears throat> and I'm not perfect at it by any means, you know, um, I, I'm aware, right? Like I'm, a, there's an awareness to um, what it is that I'm trying to create and how am I going to create that? And it's not about like, you know, planting the seed and then going and checking on it 25,000 times. It's not like that. We're not talking about like, you know, manifestation necessarily. <clears throat> what we're talking about is, you know, when I send out an email and I'm writing the email, I'm thinking about the intention behind what that email is, how I want that email to land. Mm -hmm. You know, what I want people to pick up and receive from the words that I'm saying. So, you know, anytime I, I do something, I try to put the intention behind what it is that I'm doing so that people understand, because, you know, going back to last week's episode, that was last week, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where we talked yeah. about your energy it is language. You know, I put that piece of my energy into it so that when people receive it, it doesn't come off, you know, as a glaring, nasty email, or it doesn't come off as being, ah, ha, he, he, I'm just a silly girl either. You know, it's like, if I'm sending an email, it's okay. My intention behind sending this email is that I want to evoke this change, or I need to receive this, or I need support in this way. For example, today, uh, just this morning, we needed um, an additional set of keys to get into our pool. And uh, they're like little cards, you know, like those electronic yeah. deals. And so I went on to the app that manages our, our uh, community and I set the intention of I am, need to receive a new, another key, a backup key, and uh, I don't want to pay for it. That was my intention. Free. And so I, I put the post out there and I said, you know, hey, how do I go about getting another set of keys with the intention, my vibrational intention of I don't want to pay for it, yeah. whatever it is. I don't even care if it's like five dollars. I don't pay for it. I just no. want to give it to me. Yep. And it was more of an experiment experiment for this particular show <laughs> today. And you know what? They came back and said, do you did you get your keys from your previous owner? If so, just uh, send me a picture of them and I'll get you a duplicate set for free. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have to pay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Amazing. And I think. So what about for you? Like, how do you, how, like, what's a good way to practice, like, intentional living? Like, what are some of the things you do? Hmm. 
Okay. Well, I think I want to go back to self-evaluation and self-awareness because I think that a lot of times we are setting intentions and we don't have any idea that we've set them. They're unconscious or, you know, a limiting belief that we have about something and we don't even recognize that we're doing it. And I see this a lot in my, my practice with money and teaching about money is that you know, we're so unaware of these things. So self-reflection, I'm not perfect either. It's not like every single day I'm like, I'm going to have the perfect day. Or I, you know, sometimes I don't even set an intention for my day. I'll get halfway through my day and be like, Oh shoot, (laughs) what am I doing? (laughs) You know, maybe Mm -hmm. I've set an overarching intention for my life. I think that there's layers that I, you know, I do have an overarching attention intention, that word is hard to say for me today, intention for my life to have this beautiful, abundant experience. I have an overall, you know, arching intention for my business, both of my businesses. And I have these intentions for my marriage and the relationships that I have and, and, and all of that, but it takes some course corrections, some self-evaluation, some self-reflection of, am I, in alignment with that intention. Do I even want that anymore? Do I need that? Is it, is it something that's relevant to me? Is it supporting me in the the way that I want? Um, Something that I go through very frequently is, is looking at my day and the things that I do in a day. I probably do this every six months and I'm looking for my alignment to my greatest desires. Does my day exhibit all the feelings that I perceive I will have when I have more money, for example, just as an, an easy one. And, and I'm breaking down the things that I do inside of my day. And do I want to do more of those things? Do I want to do less? A, a really good example of this is I, I'm doing a, a new webinar tomorrow. And so I really wanted to get clear. What is the intention of doing this? Is it, you know, to get more clients? Is it to have a better recording? Like, what is the intention? What, what do I want to provide to those people that show up to watch the webinar? Um, You know, what do I want to be provided in, in return or exchange? Even the social media posts, what's my intention for each one of those? So I think that there's these various levels and I am constantly in this space of self-evaluation, self-reflection. And I mean that in the most positive way. I'm thinking about why did I react to that way? So like my husband and I will get into like a little bicker or something like that. And and I'll be like, why did that bother me? (laughs) (laughs) Instead of just flying off the handle. I mean, that does happen sometimes, you know, we're humans. So sometimes we're full of emotion and that's okay. Um, But most of the time I sit back and I reflect within myself, like, what, what am I feeling right now? And what is that intention that I have for my marriage? One of the biggest intentions is communication and openness and saying the things that are really hard to say and allowing my husband to step up and support me the way that I know that he wants to, and that he can giving him that, that space to do that and setting that intention. So am I living with that intention? If I just bite his head off, maybe not, (laughs) not so much but I don't beat myself up over it either. It's this constant course correction of life evolution of who you are. So that's where I start was, is with self-evaluation. And I do lots of tests. Like you were just talking about, you know, sending something out. How does it land? Um, the funnest one that I've ever done that I can recall just off the top of my head, uh, was an intention that I had when I was spending money, when I went shopping the very last time, uh, I put the intention that when I spend my money, I spend it on things that I'm like, a uh, F yes, I love this. I want to buy it because money is just a representation of the exchange of energy. That's it. So I have you know, put my life, my creation into the things that I've done. And that has resulted in money. And then I'm going to go spend it on something. I want that to be a good exchange for all of the love and attention and bliss and joy and all of the things that I have put into it to receive that, that representation. Um, So I, I only want to spend it when I can on things that I absolutely love that I'm in love with. So I remember picking out all of these clothes and whatever. And I'm like, yes, I love that. And anything that I was like, yeah, it would be nice, but I was like, no, 
I am not buying it. So I put it back. And I remember going to the till and I'm about to pay and whatever. And, you know, self-reflection, how do I feel? And then it popped into my head. What's my intention? Uh, and more specifically, when I spend this money, what is my intention of it coming back to me? And I literally stood there, took a breath. And before I like did the little boop, the tap thing um, on the, the machine, I, I set the intention that every dollar that I've spent will come back to me tenfold. And I spent $250, something like that. I left there. By the time that I hopped into my car, one of um, our best friends offered me lunch so I didn't have to buy lunch. Score. Uh, That's like 20 (laughs) or $30 right there, right? Then I got to her house and she's like, hey, I bid on all of these silent auction items for this osteopath that her and I both see. And she's like, I got them all for like 50% off. So I bought some of those uh, score discount there. Um, I got home and I checked my, in my brokerage business, we get paid twice a week. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to figure out, you know, with commission, what you're going to get paid and whatever. So I opened up the app and I got paid, I think it was two or $3,000 more than I was anticipating. And then, uh uh-huh. And then uh, my husband came home and he was talking to his friend and his friend offered an exchange. We house his tools or something. And he's going to give us a cube van. That's like $2,500 value. That was less wow. than 24 hours. That was from like two o'clock in the afternoon until, you know, nine o'clock at night. Someone do the math on that. Cause I'm not very good at math. So <laughs> that short a period of time, and it was probably over $5,000 of value that came back into my life from that one simple intention, that one moment in time, just saying my intention is that when I spend this money, it comes back to me tenfold. And I also felt the energy move through it and come back to me and how beautiful that would feel. Um, so it can be as small as that, or as big as, you know, your intention, your grand intention for life. That is absolutely amazing. Like, I think that you summed up the entire point of intention in that one story, because it, and the thing is, is it, it really is just that easy, you know, but the, the, the key to intention is being honest about it. You know, sometimes when, when we have this intention, we're making the intention out of fear, right? I'm going to spend this money on these clothes with the intention that they're going to come back tenfold because I'm feeling like, oh gosh, I'm spending so much money on these clothes as opposed to, you know, how you did it, which was, you know, I feel good about this. This is going to be great. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, this money's going to come back to me tenfold because I feel so awesome about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so having that energetic difference between the two is really important 100%. because it would be very easy for somebody to say, I have a little fuzz on my face. So please forgive me. We have a little dog that has hair that floats. Um, So, you know, it'd be very easy to make those same decisions out of fear or make those intentions from a place of fear. And that's not the the point. The point here is, is you have to be honest Mm -hmm. with how you're feeling as you're getting ready to make the intention. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling, you know, F yes, this is awesome. Then you have no business making an intention. Hundred percent, and it's so easy to get lost in that translation of like uh, doing something because you think you have to, or it's coming from this subtle place of fear or lack or scarcity. The easiest way to see it in in my work is is through money. You know, we right. do that all the time. I'm going to launch a new product. Why? Because I want money. Okay. It's coming. You can feel <laughs> that that it's coming from a place of of scarcity or a place of lack. It's not a place of, Ooh, I really want to do this so that I can put on display this beautiful thing that I've created. And, you know, the people who watch it are going to get this, this, and this, which is so amazing. And in exchange, you know, they're going to sign up for the program or they're going to whatever. That's a completely different exchange that's happening right there. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, if somebody's watching this right now and they're feeling like, oh crap, I do that a lot, you know, out of fear, out of scarcity, that's okay. It's, it's not time to beat yourself up, like get the club or something and start whacking yourself. It's great <laughs> to know so that you can set the intention that you're more mindful of what you're going through. I think really becoming an adult and evolving and ascending is, is part, um, well, part of it, it is like learning to be your own parent and take care of yourself and listen as if you had a real child in your home, if you don't have kids, um, but a, it's a real child that is inside of you that has, is having a meltdown and you need to pay attention when they're going through that. So maybe a new intention that somebody, you know, that's feeling they make some maybe negative intentions a lot is just the intention of awareness. I want to see when I do that so that I can course correct, that I can choose something else that feels good that so that I can, you know, deal with my feelings. That's, that's something else, you know, being that person for myself, I call it the best friend. Um, that is my intention is to treat myself like my best friends would treat me. And it doesn't Mm -hmm. always go perfect. (laughs) I have pity parties and (laughs) get mad at my best friend. You know, it happens, <laughs> but my overall intention is to try to do better than I did yesterday or 10 minutes ago is to evolve to this, this greater place of understanding myself. Well, and I think that, you know, you, you really hit it on the head with, you know, how, how do you, what do you choose? You know what I mean? When you are, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh man, that's totally me. You know, I am totally that person who, you know, just everything comes out of lack and scarcity and whatever, you know, don't beat yourself up about it because you have a choice. Once you see it, you have a choice. Do you continue to subscribe to that idea or do you choose something different? You know, Great. there uh, there was a, a book I read uh, many years ago called, uh, um, oh man, it'll come to me. Um, it's off of The Course in Miracles. Anyway, it's by Gabrielle Bernstein. Oh, May Cause Miracles was the name of the book. And one of the uh, affirmations in that book that she has you do is, um, I forgive myself for having this thought, I choose love instead. And so when you are having these moments of, of, um, you know, freak outedness, you know, self-diminishing, whatever, take that and use that because you have an opportunity to change. As long as you see it, you do the reflection, you see the thing, Mm -hmm. you can then say, I forgive myself for having this thought. I choose love instead. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have fear, you can't have lack, you can't have hate, you can't have any of that shit if you have love. That's right. And like attracts like. We've talked about this last week, you know, your energy is is talking. So if you get into the space of beating yourself up, that's a form of frustration that's, you know, anger, stress, overwhelm, all of these things. So you're just seeding more of it in. And really I've done lots of work around this because that's who I used to be. It was like, oh, I'm here again. It's showing up. And when I started to explore those feelings of why am I so disgruntled that I'm getting to this point again, it was the meaning that I created in my own mind. It means that I haven't moved forward. It means that, you know, I, it's going to take me longer to get where I want to go, um, that I can't have the things that I want. And all of that is bullshit. All of that is limiting beliefs that somebody taught you, or you picked up somewhere you chose to believe. And again, you get to choose. Does it mean that you haven't evolved right now? No, not at all. You have evolved. Take a page or take a beat and see how much you have changed to prove it to yourself. Does it mean that you won't get there fast, fast enough or on time, or you're going to miss out on something? No, time is you know, a construct. So what I always say to myself when that one comes up for me is just that 
miracles can happen very, very quickly. Things can change very, very quickly. And there's always more than enough time for that to happen. Like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And then the last one of like, I'm not going to get what I want. We have this weird perception of being perfect. I have to be perfect. I have to get through all of my money blocks, all of my relationship blocks, all of these things that are blocking me before I will receive the thing. Well, no, a part of the experience is while you're with the thing, whatever, whether it's money or a relationship or whatever it may be, while you're in that experience, you are also in constant evolution. So you keep learning, you keep growing. And yes, you know, sometimes when things come up multiple times, it means that you haven't cleared it, but it doesn't mean that you're starting at the very beginning. You've evolved since the first time that you worked on this issue that's coming up right now. And you need to see that and give yourself that grace and, you know, pat pat on the back for seeing it again and going into another deeper level of yourself, a deeper level of understanding, truly. And for those of you who didn't catch that, I'm going to slow it down for you. It doesn't mean that you're starting from the beginning. I think that that's a really important thing to really take in. Just because you're seeing um, something come up again, it doesn't mean you're starting from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that sometimes I see this a lot with uh, my clients with relationships. You know, they're in a relationship and the relationship is starting to fall apart. You know, maybe it's running its course. Maybe it's just poor communication, whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the comment comes out of their mouth, the client's mouth of, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going through this all again. This was like my last five relationships. Okay. Well, let's look at those last five relationships. You know, what do they have in common? Mm -hmm. What is the thing that's the same in all of them? Because there's a common thread between all of them, right? And once you can, you know, see it, if you're still in the relationship, you have an opportunity to repair it, right? And, Mm -hmm. and, and, And fix it because, you know, humans are living, fluid, moving organisms, right? If you, if you, you don't water a plant and it starts to die and then you give it a little bit of water, it suddenly springs back to life. It's amazing. Relationships are exactly the same way. You have to give them attention. You have to pay attention. You have to look at how you're treating them, right? You have to look at how they're treating you. What can you do to change the dynamic, right? What is it in those last five relationships that happens to be the same in this one? That's step one. Step two, how are you going to move forward with intention? Mm -hmm. What is the intention for this relationship? And no, you're not starting over because you've now picked up the lesson from the last five. Mm -hmm. And, And even if it happens again, it doesn't mean you're starting over. It's like learning to ride a bike and different kinds of bikes. For example, like you have one that has trading wheels on it and then you graduate to another one just because you fall down or you wreck your bike or skin your knees or whatever. It doesn't mean that you've lost everything that you've learned. Mm-hmm. You've evolved so much. It's so interesting because um, last week, I think it was, this happened to me. I went for a, an energy healing. I might've talked about it last week on our call, but I went for this energy healing. And one of the things that she said is you have too much on your plate. And that used to be something that was, I was really bad at. I just took on more and more and more and more and more and more because my belief system said I had to do more to get more. And it was a battle to reframe that in my mind, to unlock those belief systems, to choose new ones because I had lived my whole life. And I mean, I was 30 something when I started that journey of choosing a different path and choosing that there's more than one way to do things or more than one right way to, to get there. There's billions of ways. So I remember leaving there and I was frustrated, like Jody Lynn, how did you let yourself get back there again? That's what I said to myself. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. One, 
you do not talk to yourself that way. Okay. <laughs> what's, what's wrong. If you want to have a pity party, let's go have a pity party. And like, we're going to have a proper one, like probably going to get some drinks involved, get some pillows, you know, so we can hit them, you know, if we can kick and scream. Like if we're going to have a pity party, let's do this. Right. If you want to have a pity party, like what's wrong. I literally talked to myself this way. And the thing that came out was I'm going through this all over again. How did I let myself backslide to that person that I was? And that was the meeting I had created. And I stopped in that moment and said, is that really true? Have I backslid all the way? Cause somebody is telling me that, you know, I have too much stuff on my plate. No. And then I started to, as I was driving with my husband, we went to go get water and stuff and it, we were just kind of chit-chatting and I was reflecting on things. Cause again, this is a part of my life. And I'm thinking I have changed so much from the person that I was back then when I was literally killing myself with things to do. I'm not that way. I'm not that way at all. And I started thinking of item after item and reason after reason of, of all of the reasons why I've changed and all the things that were different. And there was this like surmountable amount of evidence there that I have come so far that I hadn't backslid at all. I had the potential of maybe adding too many things and getting overwhelmed and going slightly down that road, but I didn't. I got to choose. And there was another indicator of how much I have changed. I wasn't starting at the beginning. You're not starting at the beginning because you've already done this and maybe multiple lifetimes. Definitely. Definitely. And I think that that's, you know, that's really important to understand is that, you know, it's never starting over. Mm -hmm. It's never, you know, sliding backward. It's never that. That's one thing I know about life and living is it's never that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even I fall into that <clears throat> communication trap with myself of, you know, oh my gosh, I'm starting over. Oh my gosh, it's so exhausting because I'm having to start all over, <laughs> you know? And then I think about it and I'm like, are you starting over or are you starting fresh? Okay. It's something giving new. yourself a new chance. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He completely different feeling inside of your body. One feels like defeat and like this right. long treacherous, treacherous road ahead. And the other one feels hopeful, exciting, even Two Definitely. completely different energies and two mm -hmm. different intentions behind them too. Cause you can easily go down that path of it's not good enough where I am right now. And that would be disregarding how quickly things can change for you. Speaking of relationships, you know, for me, I had bad relationship after bad relationship. You know, I was, I was there. I got the sticker or the bumper sticker, <laughs> whatever the hat, the t-shirt, I collected them all. Um, and right before I met my husband, I was engaged and I, you know, thought that we were going to get married and I, I saw red flags, but I ignored them all because I was too excited on paper. It was like, check, 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 but I wasn't checking in with me. And then when things went sideways, it was really difficult. I honestly felt like a train hitting a concrete, concrete barricade. Like my life just imploded, but in the most beautiful way, when I allowed it to, when I watched everything, I could see I was becoming this person that I didn't really want to be. I was kind of like a robot or I just did, did, did. I didn't really spend time with that person that I was with or in that relationship. I didn't really like the woman that I was becoming. And, and that's why it had to end. So the common denominator in all of my relationships were me. And that's the only thing that I could change. So I went to work on me. How, how do I want to show up? How do, how do I want to be in a partnership with somebody? What do I want that to look like? Do I want to take care of them financially all the time? Or do I want this to be a partnership? Do I want to be able to talk to them about everything? Or, you know, what, what is it? And I, I started to flush all of that stuff out. And it really started to lead in to having these conversations with myself. 
you know, I'm my partner right now. So I need to have these conversations and I need to find a way to be joyous right now and experience my life. And I was having the time of my life and literally it was probably three weeks after the breakup. My husband literally walked into my office. The rest is history. We were engaged like nine months later. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, and I think that like, once you have, have had this sort of like breakdown, this moment in time where everything has stopped and it has given you this moment of clarity of, you know, what do you actually want? Yeah. This is that reflection time period. And that reflection time period can take as long as you want. There yeah. is no time. It can take for the rest of your life if you want. You know, similar situation with me, you know, in my relationship before my husband, you know, it just, everything came crashing down around me. You know, I stuck around in it way too long. And eventually I set the intention for, you know, I love you, but I love myself more and I have to take care of me. And I set the intention that I was going to do exactly that. I hired a health coach. I got really clear on, you know, what, what it was that I wanted to create in my life. And when I had everything the way that I was liking it, I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a partner now. And when I took the partnership, when I chose the partnership and I said, it's funny because the weekend that I met my husband, I went to a, um, a workshop, a shaman workshop. That's where I met my husband. And when I went to, when I was going to the workshop, the morning that I went for the first day, like with the group, mm -hmm. I set the intention that I wanted this workshop to forever change my life, which was really interesting because I was really happy with my life. You know, I was making a lot of money. I was traveling all over the world. You know, I was famous. Like, I mean, it, it was just, I had a great life. You know, I could, it was basically yes to everything because I just had all the resources in the world and I could just totally do that. And it was just fantastic. But even though I had all of that, it just wasn't, it just wasn't what I wanted. You know, I really just wanted to love, be loved, to experience that pure love that's just completely forgiving at all facets, you know, that sparkly diamond thing that all of us little girls dream about, mm -hmm. you know, I really wanted to experience that, but that wasn't the intention for the workshop. The intention for the workshop was I wanted it to forever change my life. Mm -hmm. And, and it I sure was, did. <laughs> it sure did. It sure did. Not only, I mean, it was amazing what I learned, you know, learning to um, do shaman work. That was a phenomenal educational process. Like I, I take so many of those lessons and use them all the time, but I met the man of my dreams. I found that love that I was looking for. So the vibration behind the intention was of love and, and this amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. And, and when I met him and I realized what I had before me, I realized my life was not going to, it was not going to be conducive to this relationship. If I continued the way that I had been, it would never have worked. He wouldn't have stuck around mm -hmm. for that. And so that reflection was like, like, something needs to change. I choose him. Mm -hmm. I choose love. I choose mm -hmm. that path. Yeah, exactly. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Intention is Aww. so powerful. It is. Aww. It is. It totally is. Aww. Yeah. And I mean, even thinking about, um, you know, the, I, before it, before I had met my husband and before that, the relationship that came before him, I remember making a list and, and that's something else I think that we could talk about with intention is like being like feeling into your intention. Is it coming from you or is it coming from somebody else or something else? Like uh, for me, I had this list of all of the things that I wanted. 
um, out of a partner. And that the person before my husband checked all of those boxes, but it wasn't my list. It was a list that I thought would make my parents happy or make my friends happy, or I thought would make me happy. Or, you know, I didn't even really know what I wanted in, in that partner because I wasn't actively in the experience. I was just like, well, everybody else is doing this. So I should do this too. And it sounds really stupid, <laughs> but that's how it was. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, that's something that I think is uh, society brainwashing or something, right? Yeah. You know, all my friends are getting married. All my friends are having kids. You know, I, I have a cousin who's six months younger than me and he has grandchildren grandchildren. I don't even have my first baby and he has grandkids. Right. And it'd be so easy to get caught up in that. Right. The, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, keeping up, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. All these other people are, you know, doing it faster, better, greater than me, but that's their path, not mine. And maybe they want to, you know, be a part of that whole, you know, societal brainwashing, you know, it's just not the way that it is for me, you know, because to me, it's been my path to do my path the way I've been doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and to live from that place of intention of, you know, what do I, what do I want? Like, what do Mm -hmm. I really want? Like, what is, what is it? What is the outcome that I want to receive? And what is the feeling that I have about that? And what does it mean to me or for me or to me Mm -hmm. if it occurs? Yeah. And is that still what I want? And it's okay if the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Or if the answer is no, 10 years in. Mm -hmm. When we bought this house, when we bought this house, we came out here and we were looking at all these different houses and I wanted a house, you know, <laughs> big, great, huge house. Right. I wanted like a 3000, 4,000, 5,000 square foot house with a big pool and like three car garage. Like I wanted a house and that is not what we bought. And now that we are in here, I'm like, you know, this house is perfect. Mm-hmm. It's less to clean. You know, mm-hmm. it's like got enough space for everything that we need. You know, people can still come visit and we still have space for them. You know, it's not 5,000 square foot house. Yeah. It's not a shoebox either, you know, but when, when we set the intention, when I set the intention for, for my experience out here, my experience was, I want to buy a house. Mm-hmm. That was my intention. I want to buy a house and it's going to be, I want it to be the perfect house for us. That's perfect. And it's so yeah. interesting how you could have went down this, this path of ego almost like I need this because other people want that it's grandiose. It feels luxurious. I don't, I, it'll make me feel expansive in this journey for me in building our forever home. We haven't even started yet, but I have learned so much, you know, just understanding why do I want that? you know, just cause I want it like, it, okay, sure. If that's what I want my answer to be. Okay. I'll go with that. One simple thing. I'm like, I want a kick-ass bathtub. I want a big bathtub so I can have bubble baths and I can soak and, and all of this stuff. And it's so interesting because I went to go babysit my niece. And so I stayed at my brother's house and they have a brand new home. They just built it and they have like the bathtub of my dreams. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah. And the last time I babysat her, I didn't have enough time to have a bath because she was around and I wanted to hang out with her. So when she went to school on Monday, I canceled my entire day and I got in the tub. And the entire time, the only thing I could think of was how much water I was wasting. Cause I was all <laughs> by myself in this giant <laughs> tub. And for, for us here, we're on yeah. the farm, we transport our water in. So that's something that I'm cognizant of. We're, you know, we're very efficient with our water. Um, and I grew up on a farm, so we were very efficient with our water at home. So as this bathtub is filling in and I'm just this <laughs> tiny little thing inside of this giant bathtub, I'm like, what do I need all of this room for? What am I doing? It immediately became clear. I no longer want that. 
I, I would rather have a hot tub. So then it's always full and I can go outside and watch the beautiful stars. We have no light pollution out here because we live in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I would rather have that than a giant bathtub in my house. I could have a regular size bathtub because I'm five foot one and a half. So, I mean, I could fit in anything. And, and that's how our intentions evolve is by being curious about why, why do you want said thing? Is it really for you or is it for somebody else? Yeah, definitely. And I think that that's a really um, key point, you know, is, is what you want for you or for someone else? Is it somebody else's perception of you? And, you know, like the whole, you know, reaching success thing, Mm -hmm. you know, you have reached success when you drive a BMW and you have a big house and a wife and 2.2 kids and a dog. And, you know, that all of a sudden you're like super successful, right? But are you? Maybe success for you was being a lumberjack. Yeah. Maybe deep down underneath all that exterior bullshit, you really just wanted to be, I don't know, a trout um, stalker for a lake. Yeah. Or you wanted to be the surfer, dude. Exactly. The beach bum. The beach bum. Mm Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. What is your intention and who is it for? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh man, we covered a lot of ground already. Mm -hmm. If you're enjoying this conversation, make sure that you hit that like button and the subscribe. It's our intention to uh, double our subscribership. So you guys can help us with that by sharing it, making sure you're subscribed and you know, showing up. We just appreciate that you guys show up every single week. We love talking to you. <laughs> if you've got Definitely. questions, drop them in the, the, the chat there. We can answer anything for you. Um, yeah, and you know, I think, I think I would like to like everyone who's here today, I'd like to task you with a, um, a little mini project. Take some time today and reflect on one aspect of your life, just one. And don't make it a big one. Make it a little, you know, a little puny one. You can look at the big ones later, right? But just pick one, you know, and, and look at how you relate to that. And if you have an intention already set around it, And if you don't, is there an intention you can set? If you do, is it the right intention? And just do a little housekeeping on Mm -hmm. how you are being intentional in your life. For me right now, I'm in a cycle of being intentional around food. So food, um, I have had a lot of um, stuff in the past around food. Food makes you fat right? That's a big story that my brain likes to tell me. And so when I am eating these days, I am eating from the place of this is going to nourish my body. This item that I'm eating is nourishing. The intention that I set for the item, my experience with the item is it is going to nourish my body and it's going to nourish my soul. And then I eat it. And it's delicious. <laughs> Even when it's not delicious, it's still delicious. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, kind of look at where you have intention set, where you don't have intention set. And can you do some reflection on, on maybe making some changes? And, and then you can kind of measure those changes and see if they have affected you differently. Vicki mm-hmm. has asked, uh, should your intention come from your heart? I think so. I think so too. I think it's the purest place, if you will, you know, direct connection to, to source, I think is within the heart. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's more powerful. Does it have to come from your heart? Um, no, I guess not. Cause it's your intention. So whatever you want your intention to be, it, it will be Um, and, but I do think that when it comes from the mind or other places, it's really, it could be really distorted 
based on a limitation that you have in your own brain or, you know, what society is telling you it should look like or what someone else has told you that you should be doing. Um, whereas when you really bring those things into your heart, maybe you make the intention, then you bring it into your heart and say, does this resonate with, you know, my highest, best self, my, my heart space. Um, and if it doesn't, you make adjustments from there, but yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a great, yeah, everything changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, you literally can bring anything into your heart and it'll tell you, I mean, it's the ultimate, uh, truth of everything. You know, it will never lie. So you can ask it anything. (laughs) So I want to go back over the definition of intention. Now that we're at the end of our episode, roughly. It says an act or instance of determining mentally upon some action or result, the end or object intended purpose. So I think we should reframe that. And I think we should reframe that as an act or instance of determining vibrationally upon some action or result, the end or object intended purpose. I don't think that it is a mental game. I think it's a vibrational game. Yeah. Because just like we discussed about energy last week, you throw your energy into your intention and magic happens and it's, it's guaranteed. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yep. I completely agree. I love it. And I love the little exercise that you gave everybody to do. I think that's a great place to start. If you feel like you're not intentional. Yeah. You can start small and that will change a whole bunch of things. Mm-hmm. You have something coming up, don't you? I do. I do. You should so share it with the group. <laughs> tomorrow, I am doing a live free training at noon mountain time. So that would be uh, one o'clock central, 11 o'clock um, uh, Pacific. Yes, that's right. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. I, um, yeah, it's all, it's going to be all about how to consistently attract more money, uh, so that you can live, you can do the things that you truly want to do and never feel like you're running out of money again. I'm going to go through, uh, the common mistakes that entrepreneurs make when trying to attract more money. Like I can't feel anything but positive. Um, I have to do more work. You know, if I just get rid of this one belief system that everything will change, um, I'm going to give you some shifts around that so that you can start making some more headway. And then I'm going to go through my signature program, which, which is, uh, the fluid money blueprint. And I'm going to teach you how to unlock your abundance blocks, how to dismantle negative money perspectives and set your life to abundance on autopilot. And it's all going to be at noon. It's going to be about an hour long. Um, Yeah. And my intention is to give you lots and lots of goodies and um, yeah, share some very, very special things at the very end. Where can they go to sign up? Ooh, I am going to put something here in the chat. It's jodylincraven.com slash attract more. So super easy. Yeah. Great. I Mm -hmm. also put it in there. Um, Thank you. So, uh, oh, Vicky has a question here. If your intention is not fulfilled, would you say you are out of vibration with it? Good question. Maybe. I guess the question is, is how do you know it's unfulfilled? Perhaps it's a timing issue. Yes. You know, I mean, you got to look at timing too. Sometimes it's just not right here on your path. It's out here on your path. You know, I mean, I guess it could be that you are out of vibration with it. You know, if your vibration is saying one thing and you're intending something different, they should be in alignment with one another. And if they're not, then that could send mixed signals. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if the way that I was, um, was looking at, at that question, if your intention is not fulfilled, would it mean you're out of vibration with it? Um, meaning like it's not meant for you or that a different path. 
I think when it's that signature that, you know, you're, you're going down the wrong path, wrong path, um, a better path is for you, or, you know, there's something else that needs to happen that side of things. I think you'll feel it when you really start paying attention to it of like, uh, I'm just a little bit off because maybe I don't want to go and do this. Like Vicki said, uh, not finding a job, you know, maybe there's a part of you that really doesn't want to get a new job and, and, and that's it. Or it's not the time to get a new job yet because where you're, you are right now, you're going to meet somebody that, you know, will, will help you in certain direction, that timing issue that you're talking about. Or if it's, I want a new job because I want more money and I want a different, you know, whatever, right. Maybe that's completely off the path that you're supposed to be on. I think that you'll feel that because you'll feel that it doesn't flow as easily. It feels kind of like mud, like you're in the mud. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what I pick up on this, when I kind of read into this, um, situation to me, it feels like this person, um, this obviously is not, uh, a Vicky, but this person that, uh, she is communicating about to me, it feels more of like a, it's so hard Mm -hmm. and I can't do it. Because I've been, it's like, almost like they're creating this belief system around, I'm never going to find it. It's not for me. It's too hard. There's not enough. And, and it's more of like, they keep reinforcing the evidence that it's unavailable. That is what it feels like to me about that Mm -hmm. particular person not finding a job. Yeah. I don't know if that resonates or not, but that's kind of what I pick up. So. Anyway, you should send that human to Jody's uh, webinar tomorrow <laughs> because that I think could possibly shift that person's life quite significantly. Um, it's a fantastic event I've attended before. I've, I've attended your programs before. They're just amazing. It's one of the many reasons I love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And we, um, we are making a, a little shift change for next week's episode. So we are normally at uh, three o'clock central, which is two o'clock mountain, mountain which is yep. one o'clock Pacific and four o'clock for you East coasters. But we're going to actually, uh, we're going to have it at five next week. Central, Five four Central. mountain, three Pacific, six Eastern. Nailed it. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, we are shifting things. We have a very, very, very special surprise. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you have the notification bell on and you are subscribed because you don't want to miss us going live, but we are going live at five o'clock next Tuesday. And we have a very, very, very special surprise for you, but we're not going to tell you what it is just yet. Yep. Yep. It'll be, um, quite the surprise. (laughs) That's right. We're excited. (laughs) (laughs) And we know you will be too. (laughs) Yes, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, Again, our intention is to grow our channel. We are looking to get a custom URL so that people can actually find us on YouTube. So if you could send us your friends, your family, your fur babies, whatever, we'll take it (laughs) because we need it. (laughs) And it's our intention to grow. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next week. Bye.